I'm going to explain how to access the average data set from the Peters field field trip and then create some uh, uh, <coughs> scatter graphs and add in a line of best fit. So first of all you want to go to Chrome and then type in vle.bdales.org.uk Let's head to Geography, BAC and then Urban and the link you want is the Petersfield data set. You've then got it here in a format that will open up in Excel so if you click it it'll download, click and it opens up. Now what you've got here is the street names if I just select it all and if we have a go wrap, oh let's not do that, if we select here wrap it You'll be able to see more of what it is. So we've got the street names, then we've got the decibel reading, gut feeling survey, penalty score, pedestrian count, vehicle count, evidence of crime, average house price, number of crimes, and then distance from the station and height above sea level. And all of this stuff you can sort of forget about because we're going to use that later on for when we have a go mapping the data. So in order to graph any data, you need to first of all just select anything. So just select anything and don't worry what it is and click insert. And then you're heading to this button here where it says insert scatter. And you want this first scatter graph. The first thing you want to do then is right click on the graph area and you want to click select data. If you remove the stuff that you selected, and then click add. You've then got the x-axis here, the series x values which is along the bottom and if we have a go first of all plotting distance along the bottom and then we've got the y-axis here so select what's in there, get rid of that and then let's say we want to do decibel readings with distance from the train station so we select just the numbers, click OK, click OK again and there we are it's plotted it. Now this isn't it finished. What you now need to do is add the axis titles and make sure it's got an appropriate title. So the best thing to do is to right click and move the chart to a new sheet because then it opens it up much bigger. You're then looking at this button at the top left that says add chart element. And what we want to do is add in primary horizontal axes, vertical axes. What you want to do is try and make it look as much like one that you would hand draw, so you can add in minor grid lines. And so if we click here, we can change this to distance from train station and make sure we include the units, which is uh, kilometers. And then up the side, we've got uh, decibel reading in decibels. And then we could give it an appropriate title like graph showing distance from train station against decibel reading. And then that pretty much looks like one that you might well hand draw. What we can then do, the added little extra, is we can add in a line of best fit or it's described in Excel as a trend line. So if we make sure we've clicked the uh, graph, we then go back to this add chart element. And if you click trend line, you want a linear trend line. And what it then allows you to do is it automatically plots you this line which shows you the correlation or relationship of the line. If we go back by clicking the tab at the bottom to open up the sheet again with all of the data, we could have another go. Um, what you could do is pick two sets of data that you think there might be some sort of relationship. And an interesting one might be something like what happens to the house price as distance from train station um, changes. So again, if we sort of select some data, insert, scatter, right click, select data, remove the data we've selected, add, and then in the X axis we put distance from, and then in the y-axis, let's put house prices, press OK, again move it to a new sheet, add chart elements, we can add in axis titles, and 
similarly, we can add in a trend line, and you can see that the house prices increase as we move away. But then also we've got these anomalous, these little bits of data that don't quite fit the pattern. And you can start to think, well, why? Which area is that? Which area is that? And why are there peaks at those distances? So this is a really interesting tool to start analyzing the data.